Hello and welcome. We're so excited to have you here on this lovely Thursday evening in Boston. Uh, my name is Danny Hoffman. I'm one of the academic advisors at Kilashand Honors College, and I'm really excited to be joined by my colleague and a number of phenomenal students who are here to share some of their experiences with you all. Uh, to give you a little sense of what we'll be talking about today, we're really focusing in on advising and student support at Kilashand Honors College. Uh, we've had a number of other programs throughout the week, and we have more coming up, um, which we hope you will take uh, the time to visit as uh, you continue to explore Kilashand and the opportunities that you may find here. Uh, to give you a, a, a little bit more of an overview of who we are as Kilashand, so we're gonna do a quick, a quick round of introductions and then we're gonna drive right into an overview of advising and student support at Kilashand. Uh, Eric. Happy to take the mic. Thank you, Danny, for the wonderful intro here. So I'm Eric Lopez. I'm an academic advisor here. I've been at Kilishan for now three years. Um, I've worked uh, exclusively with students on the BU Hub, which we'll talk about a little bit here today. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us and happy to have you all. Fabulous. Morgan. Hi, everybody. I'm Morgan. I'm a junior. I'm going to be a senior next year. Um, I'm majoring in international relations and I am an academic ambassador here and I'm really excited to share everything that I know about Kilatin Advising with you today. Fabulous, thank you, Morgan. We got our duo. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Aiden Cliff. I am a sophomore uh, in the dual degree program within Questrom and Economics in CIS. And I'm really excited to talk about advising today with all of you. And I'm Charlie, I'm a sophomore in Sargent College majoring in human physiology. Um, just a quick heads up, we've been getting internet unstable messages the past couple minutes, so we will do our best, but if it starts to get choppy, uh, just so you know it's, what's going on from our end. But we are so happy to be here, and we are really excited to share everything we love about Killishon with you guys today. Yes, fabulous. Love the, the, the dueling heads. I'm gonna bounce over to Marie. Hi everyone, my name is Marie. I'm a sophomore here in Kilchin. I'm an international relations major with a Spanish minor on a pre-law track. And I'm so happy to be here today to tell everyone about Kilchin. Fabulous, thanks Marie. Jackson. Hello, my name is Jackson. I am a junior. Um, I am in Kilchin and I'm in the uh, BA in economics and math and BA MA program in economics. Um, I'll be a senior next year and I'm so excited to share my enthusiasm. Well, we're excited to have you all here. Uh, to give you another overview again, we're gonna, Eric and I are gonna give you a, a brief presentation um, that will give you an overview of Kilashan and advising and student support. And then we will turn it over to our fabulous student panelists. We have a couple of questions for them and then we will also open it up to you all in the audience. So if you do have questions, feel free to use that Q&A feature down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, so Kilashan, our mission really is to offer a challenging educational experience that, that pushes you to think critically and creatively, bringing together the interests that you share uh, and as well as tackling different ideas uh, and, and working with folks with different academic disciplines to problem solve uh, as we think about global challenges uh, in, in, this, in this 21st century. Uh, Kilishan provides an integrated four-year curriculum and we really have you tackle huge issues ranging uh, you know, across the globe, um, both social, corporate, uh, geopolitical challenges um, over the course of your four years. And if you wanna know more about the specifics of the academic components, we just had two events earlier this week and we have those videos up um, and we certainly invite you to also uh, ask questions as those uh, come up via email. We have opportunities for you to engage with other Kilishan students. Um, our advising mission is really to help you think about your BU experience and collaboratively come up with a way for you to engage with what's important to you and all of the different programs and opportunities that you will come across at Boston University. Um, we seek to establish a, a network between Kilishand uh, and your home school, be that the School of Arts and Sciences, the School of Engineering, wherever you may end up. Uh, and we really hope that we will be a hub uh, for your experience here at BU. Uh, and, and as you come in and have conversations with, that, with us throughout your four years, 
Uh, we will help you be familiar with the general education requirements, what are other opportunities on campus, and how you can kind of all tie that together as your collective BU experience. And of course, on the screen, uh, you see Eric and myself, um, as well as Amanda Shalian and Taryn Craig, who are our fabulous advising team. Now, all of that takes place in our specialty residences. In your first year, you live in Kilishan Hall, which is where our offices are, which is something that I really love because you have a question about class or you just wanna brainstorm an idea for a paper, you can come down to the first floor and our offices are in your building. Uh, and um, Kilishan students live on the first or the second and third floor in their first year and some on the fourth, uh, fourth floor. And your RAs are also Kilishan students. So it's really a unique live and learn community. You're taking courses with your first year students, you're living with them and you're supported by RAs uh, on that floor. And after your first year, you can choose to stay in the building. You can move up the street to Kilishan House, which is a beautiful brownstone on Bay State Road, um, or live in one of the many, many other places on campus um, or in an apartment just off campus if that's something that you're really excited about doing. So thank you, Danny, for our wonderful introduction and running through those slides. So I'd love to talk a little bit here about, you know, what advisors roles are when it comes to the conversation of you're entering a university. You, this is a brand new home for you. And we want to make sure that not only are you comfortable, but are you assured in the choices that you're making? So as we look through this list here, right, identifying and integrating their interests, strengths and goals, I think it's a key component of how we all start conversations. When it comes to Kilishan advising, it is a holistic process. It's one in which we want to understand the student and to create this fulfilling and coherent academic plan, we have to get to know them. And so we have these opportunities to really be one-on-one -on -one and also to forward them to resources that we've been able to learn more about. We've been key with either knowing about the Career Development Office or knowing someone in the Howard Thurman Center, these connections that we can help students make and understand and both rely on, rely, rely upon. That said, we also have to, as academic advisors, really offer the opportunity to know the Kilishan curriculum and see how it integrates throughout the rest of their journey within BU. So what that means is understanding the BU hub, their major or their minor requirements, all the way to their college requirements that may all be uh, working together to get them to that four year graduation point. So finding balance is really an important component of that. And I think what one of those things comes up very quickly for students and that comes up in a conversation around how can I double major or how can I do a dual degree? These conversations happen not only frequently, but I think often at the point of where we wanna create trust to say, hey, bring these ideas, bring as big of an idea as you want to, let's talk through it and let's engage in these opportunities and see where they may take us. So finally, one of the real, I think, cornerstones of what we do is really making sure that these students are connected throughout the community, whether that be leadership opportunities in our department, in Kilishan itself, or hosting events in Kilishan, or just enriching their peer connections. We wanna find many ways for them to integrate themselves across campus, not just necessarily with our hall, but in the grander sense of being a BU student and a BU community member. So we'll go to the next slide here. And we'll talk a little, and so really when we, this slide here really kind of is, exemplifies what we're kind of looking at when we talk about sort of the BU components here. We're talking about the Kilshawn Arms College being this sort of base for things, right? It is the BU hub pathway for these students that allows them to fulfill major components of their graduation requirements. That said, how do we then connect those to that world exposure, that professional disciplines, the liberal education, and this contact with research in a myriad of ways? And I think this is exemplified by students in our, in our college really finding research opportunities in their freshman year by being a researcher for NBC Universal on a Vietnam War documentary, all the way to just students realizing wait, maybe this is the, not the major for me. Maybe this isn't the necessary part. And so as we sort of identify and integrate these components, we find ways to make sure that these are equitable choices for the student and make sure to identify the ways in which they identify with their curriculum while also saying, hey, here's your base. Kilishand is your base and here's where we can really hone everything in and really be practical about the choices coming forward and also understand where can our dreams take us too. So, We'll head on to the next slide as well. And this is really, I think, one of the primary ways in which we really move forward with building this academic plan is the sort of collection of resources that, you know, as a as someone who also went to college and had difficulty in defining their plan at a time, 
I kind of wish I had this set of resources that are available to our students throughout. And this is just a small example right here in front of us of our degree advice platform. So this is essentially a place where our students are able to click in and check on how are they going through their major requirements, their minor requirements, the BU Hub, Killashan, their college requirements, and their advanced credits all in one centralized space. And you can see here in this short example, I know it's a very small one, and if you can't see with the high quality, all the green is a good thing. It means that they fulfilled these requirements. And as you can see from some of those, they're fulfilled by Killashan requirements in particular, again, being a hub pathway. So we'll keep moving here. And I'll briefly touch on what the BU Hub is kind of like, and, I'll, and I'm happy to kind of, kind of pilot this as well. And so with the BU Hub, there are 26 units that are required. And as you see, we fulfill 13 of those units with just required coursework, and we'll fulfill up to nine of those additional units with choice coursework. What that means is a student can be intentional about how they approach the BU Hub, the general education requirements of the university, while also understanding, well, I can see a pathway where 80% of my BU Hub is fulfilled by Killashan, rather than taking a suite of courses and trying to navigate the, the array of courses that are available at, Kill at BU, we are instead offering this opportunity to not only hone in, but also to know these are the courses that are really uh, enabling me to create other choices and to create space for other things. Because traditionally, right, these BU Hub requirements would need to be fulfilled by individual courses. So with our curriculum, we're allowing students to empower themselves to be able to make additional choices, while also, obviously, having an, an array of choices available to them and being able to understand those as they move forward and as they go through BU life. So it's a fun process and it's lots of details and I love helping people understand those details. So please in the Q&A box, if you see anything that I just said or you're just kind of scratching your head at what we just talked about, I'm happy to answer it and we're happy to talk more about it as we talk right here. I'll hand it back to Danny now. Well, and of course, a major component of your experience at BU is going to be about exploring your intellectual interests, your academic uh, uh, considerations, all the different things that you could explore and tackle. Uh, another core element to your BU experiences are the other things that are equally important in creating a, a whole human, right? Thinking about taking care of us and, and making sure we're taking wellness uh, uh, time for ourselves. We're getting outside, we're meeting new people, we're thinking about all the different ways that we can uh, bridge the many, many opportunities you have in Boston and at BU uh, to, to be the best version of yourself that you want to be, right? Um, and so within Killashan, of course, there are a number of ways that we can do that as well. Um, we have a number of different um, fabulous student groups, including a peer mentor program. We, some, some of the students here today are also ambassadors, right? So their role is to help students understand Killashan. Peer mentors help first year students uh, get situated at, on campus in that first year. Uh, we have a number of different experiential learning opportunities, uh, including programs uh, abroad and in Boston. We, we have a special event uh, that will cover some of that in a couple of um, weeks, so please keep an eye out for that if something you're really interested in. Um, one of the, the culminating event, of course, of your four years is the Keystone Project, your senior project, um, where you get to and dive in and, and do a serious piece of research kind of on something that you're really passionate about. And of course, different community events, co-curriculars, the circle series, chocolate chats, so many pieces and ways for you to engage with our community. Um, and while you're thinking about all that, we want to make sure we're, we're finding time to stay balanced and taking time for yourself, right? Um, so thinking about what does that look like? What are the, are the ways um, that we can support you in that journey? Um, one of the things that we always love, we mentioned our offices are on the first floor. We have this beautiful common room where we host a lot of events. We have Kilshan Teas where we get to eat food together. Um, that will happen again. I know it will. Um, and it's something that's really a beautiful moment to, to, to reflect and just take a Friday afternoon, a Thursday afternoon to touch base. Um, the killers and the peer mentors, they host study breaks uh, every other week, typically. Um, and those range from watching the Super Bowl party to carving pumpkins. Here you see them decorating uh, chocolate chip cookies. Um, there's always something going on in the community, including uh, faculty and staff sharing some of their favorite films, leading short discussions. Sometimes these are directly connected to courses we're taking, and sometimes it's just something we want to share with you on a Friday night. Um, which brings us to the co-curricular program. Um, this is a really unique component to our formal curriculum where we have different activities that bring you together outside of your typical sphere of activities. So we're taking folks and, and, and um, bringing really amazing 
people to campus uh, and engaging you in your core coursework with these different activities. So co-curriculars will um, build on some of the different course content that you may be involved in, um, as well as being hosted by our faculty and residents, for example, or different artists. Um, you see here one event, the co-curricular event, When Home Won't Let You Stay, Migration Through Contemporary Art. This was a, a, an exhibit um, at the Contemporary Art Museum, where we had a talk with the curator, and we tied in directly the first year, uh, the writing program that you were that the students were taking, and this was a core element of that experience. Um, and in, which leads us then to the Circle Series, which Eric's going to talk to us a little bit about. And that's because I love the Circle Series. Well, I hosted at Killigan Hall. The Circle Series is an empowering space for BU students and community members. Really what that means is these are brave spaces. These are spaces particularly dedicated to sharing our individual experiences at BU. I'm a facilitator of those. Um, I operate as someone just connecting the conversation. Uh, and so in these spaces, these particular student populations, as you can see here, we currently offer circles for POC, LGBTQIA+, and FGLI, which is first generation low income circle. So all of these circles identify with one population and serve to create a space that is both brave and open while also you know sharing an empanada here and there and sharing some food and sharing space together and really the, the goal of it is to say you know what are the stories that we can share here um, that maybe we can't share anywhere else too so creating space for that as well so as we move forward and think about sort of who we should talk to also about about these spaces if we move to the next slide here um, one of the things that we have to pitch here, and, and, and I wish Taryn Craig was here because so we could talk about just how much amazing work she does with these people, these Tillichon ambassadors, and it's incredible what the role they play in terms of just engaging with not only incoming students, but just you all as admitted students getting more knowledge. And so please, um, if you find yourself with the time, and I understand that this is a pretty rush of a time and there's lots of things going on as admittances that are coming and going and deposits are happening but if you'd like to take a moment these ambassadors are people who are really ready and willing to take that moment um, with you all to really answer your questions so please go on our, on our website and you'll be able to go to under people to ambassadors and there you'll be able to find hopefully someone who either matches your major or just matches your interests as well so yeah that'll be great and then one little plug that we also want to give here as well is the virtual premiere of Already Home. Um, Issa Vary is one of is a senior in Kilishan. And just thinking about that fact is just baffling to me. Um, Issa Vary is a Kilishan senior. And this is a original musical inspired by her Keystone project. So you are all invited. Um, if you'd like to RSVP, you can take down this email now. Um, you can take this email, also watch the recording later on if you'd like the email as well. But it's going to be an incredible experience. And so I can't wait. So this is all April 10th at 7 p.m. And so with that, we'd just love to announce the upcoming open house events on April 14th for the Living Learning Community, which I will be hosting along with our faculty and residents, uh, two current RAs, as well as a collection of students. On Saturday, we'll have um, April 17th, we'll have the Keystone Project and Experiential Learning that Daniel will be happily be part of. And then Thursday on April 22nd, a Kilishan student panel to really get that uh, student information. And you can visit your BU portal to register for all of those. So now I will, our presentation is, our formal presentation's over. We'd love to just introduce our students and reintroduce our students quickly and hopefully guide a conversation and just get a couple of questions in there about their experiences with advising and student support at Kilishan. So, Right, let's get started on that. So we'll pull up the questions now. Yeah, maybe um, we can get someone to jump in. Just initially, like, what are some of the questions that maybe you brought to your Killashan advisor uh, and, and how they have helped you identify some of your interests in integrating all of that together? I can jump in here because I came in undecided. So I was in the advising office all the time. Um, I met with Danny at orientation and I told him that I really liked history, but I also really liked science and I also really liked my Chinese classes and I had no idea what I was going to do. And then when I arrived on campus, um, Taryn, who isn't here, is my advisor and I would go down to her office like at least once a week. And I would just sit down with her and I would tell her my new plan. Um, and she helped me construct like this Jenga tower 
of uh, major and minors. And so I'm an international relations major. And when you're an IR major, you have tracks. And so I'm doing the environment development track and minoring in environmental science. And then I'm doing the Asia track and I'm minoring in Chinese. And so I would go down there all the time to talk about my academics and then also how Kilichin would fulfill what I would miss. Um, so I'm gonna get, be getting philosophical life meaning hub credits from a Kilichin class next year. Um, but I would also just go down to talk to Taryn because she's such a friendly face and everybody in the advising office is a friendly face. And so if I was worried about something, if I really missed home, I would just go down, grab some tea, sit down with Taryn and have a nice chat. Fabulous, thank you, Morgan. Any other kind of quick quick hits on, on ways in which um, we helped you integrate your interests or, or the types of questions that you would bring to your Kilishan advisor? I, I can go from here. Um, Morgan mentioned it a little bit closer to the end, but um, all of the Kilishan advisors are a very, very friendly face. And like Danny said before, the offices are right on the bottom of where all of you are going to live freshman year. And inside that office is a massive, massive coffee machine and free for Kilishan students, I might add, which is definitely a nice perk. So definitely as soon as you swipe into your dorm, you, it's very commonplace to see an advisor just out in the hallway chatting to a student, or you can just kind of say hi as you're passing by and grab a, uh, grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or whatever you fancy and a snack and just go in and have a conversation with your advisor. And it doesn't need to be overly academic. I mean, I've had conversations about um, with Eric about running or anything of the sorts and it can just be anything you absolutely want. And it's a lot more than just an academic advisor, but they're actually somewhat of a friendly face and a very friendly face and a friend in that matter as well. <laughs> Thanks, Aiden. Um, we have a, a question that came in from uh, someone uh, who is listening in. Uh, they're wondering how Kelishan students found roommates uh, for their first year. And, and then from then on out, uh, how do you find roommates? What does that look like? I can take this one. Uh, Aiden and I are actually roommates. Um, it was kind of funny. So, you know, going through the roommate process, being a Kilishan student, you do live in Kilishan Hall your first year, and you live on a Kilishan Honors floor within Kilishan Hall. So you're surrounded by other people in the Honors College. Um, and you can go through like two different main pathways to find a roommate. Um, if you want, you can go through Facebook. Um, BU sets up Facebook groups for all of the admitted students. It's a great way to get to meet some people with similar interests to you. People usually, I'm sure you've probably seen by now, but everybody does an obligatory, you know, collection of their best Instagram pictures and a quick little bio, like what kind of music they listen to, what they're interested in, what their major is, all that kind of stuff. So you know, going through this as a freshman, I think it was probably, it was right around this time, April, uh, maybe even May, I was furiously scouring through the Facebook group and I found Aiden's page, Aiden's little bio about himself. So, you know, I sent him a message, um, we got to talking and we just, we decided to go for it. We thought we would be a good match. And, you know, in our sophomore year, we still live together and we're gonna live together next year in our junior year. Um, if you can't find someone, which I know a lot of people uh, who either decided not to go that path because they couldn't see, they couldn't find someone through the Facebook group or they just wanted to go random, um, you can also go down that pathway. Um, the housing office has a little survey that you fill out with some questions about your lifestyle, things like, you know, what time do you usually go to bed? What time do you like to wake up? Um, stuff like that. And then they will sort of run it's almost like a compatibility check and they'll show you people who match up similarly. You can chat with them through the, um, the housing portal. And even then, if you ultimately still uh, can't find someone that way, you will you can be just placed random with other Kilishan students. So um, if you find somebody that you match with, fantastic. If not, no worries. I have a bunch of friends who went totally random and have wound up you know, being really great friends with their roommates and suite mates. Jackson, do you have a, 
element you um, want to share? Yeah, yeah. So just a brief anecdote. I went random and it, it turned out very well. Um, you know, I'm still in very good terms with my first year roommate and we we got along very well. We had, I think, remarkably similar life patterns for having been randomly assigned, but I think there's also a lot of merit to maybe um, bumping into somebody you wouldn't otherwise have met. And we were, that was the case for us. We were in very different programs of study, did very different extracurriculars, and probably had I been on Facebook and Instagram trying to find somebody, we wouldn't have been together. But I'm very happy we were. So I think you really can't go wrong in the process. So you, you, you brought up having, you know, bumping into people with different uh, kind of lifestyles and experiences. And um, uh, uh, we got a question here is talking about, I'm, I'm a bit of a night owl. So I wanted to ask, are there dorm rules regarding things such as what time the lights must be off by? Um, and, you know, generally, like, what is it like living in the dorm? Like, what types of guidelines are there? How do you kind of establish relationships um, when, when you turn the lights off, um, when you're sleeping, all that good stuff? So I can talk about this just a little bit. Um, I sympathize with your question a lot because that was something I was definitely worried about um going into this year um i was lucky enough to meet my roommate at orientation um we were in the same group we got along real well decided to live together um she's still my roommate this year it's going great but um like regardless no matter if you you know you do like the person how you're gonna live with them that's something different um so i understand your concern um so essentially what happens at the beginning of each semester your ra is going to hold a floor meeting um, you're going to get to know a lot of the other members of the floor. Um, they will explain the rules, the guidelines, um, everything that you need to be aware of for the semester. Um, the, there's nothing pretty exceptional. There's, there's quiet hours later at night, um, just so you're not disturbing anyone while they're trying to sleep. Um, you know, treat everyone with respect, like be aware of your, of your surroundings. Um, nothing, nothing, anything out of the ordinary. Um, and then as well, uh, housing will have you all sign a roommate agreement at the beginning of each semester as well, um, in which you, you sit down with you and your roommate, you and your suite mates, you talk about like how you wanna handle the semester going forward, um, which I know like we found, I know when we got that, uh, my suite mates and I freshman year were like, oh, like, do we really have to, like, is that something we, like, we're gonna get along fine, it's fine. But at the end of the day, it was a very good thing to do, um, to kind of like set those rules beforehand. Um, and then also to like, that's, those are definitely the, the, you know, the ways BU tries to help out, but I'm sure that if you talk to your roommate about that kind of stuff, these things can get worked out. Um, like, at least for me, I tend to go to bed a little bit earlier. My roommate goes to bed later. Um, like we were fine compromising a lot of the time. Also, she just kind of ends up on her laptop like later at night too. Sometimes if I'm trying to sleep, like she'll be nice enough to shut the lights off. Sometimes I'll stay up later. So um, there are things that you can definitely figure out. Um, absolute worst case scenario, you go to your, your RA, something can get um, worked out. So um, your, your concerns will be listened to and it will work out. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple of other questions coming in. Um, one is kind of exploring this idea of how your Killashawn advisor works with your homeschool, right? So how does Killashawn advising complement your homeschool or college about advising? And how have you built a, a network of resources at BU? So I suppose I could talk about this one as well. Um, I know all of us are <laughs> seeing who's going to go first. We're all we're, we're all cap perfectly capable of answering this, but um, but at least for me, the way that that's worked out is um, I was matched with my Kyochan advisor first. That's kind of the first person you're going to meet once you get on campus. Um, my advisor is Taryn. She's not present here, um, but she is wonderful. Um, I just met with her for a half hour last week. I think we spent 25 minutes of our call just talking about life. Um, which was kind of awesome. Uh, she's, she's so caring about every every aspect of what's going on with me. Uh, so it was a great call, but you're gonna meet your Kayla Chan advisor first. And then after that, um, once you pick your major, um, minor, whatever whatever it is you're getting involved with, you will get assigned an advisor of, um, in connection with that. Um, you'll get to meet up with them. Uh, they help you out as well. Um, 
basically as Kilgen students, we kind of just get extra resources, um, which is really wonderful. So you just have so many areas of support. You have your Kilgen advisor, you got your major advisor, minor advisor. Um, a lot of times if you have a good relationship with a professor, you can kind of select them to be your advisor as well. Um, I know I, I did that with one of the IR professors uh, for me because we have a great relationship. I did research with her last semester. Um, so you get assigned people, you can choose people. Um, and as Kill Chan students, we're very lucky to have so many people to go talk to about so many different issues and everything works together um, so well, the more information, the better. Uh, so it's a really great system um, that we have access to here. Jackson. Um, yes, so I'm in the economics department, which is the largest um, undergraduate department at BU. So having a dedicated Kilichon advisor will really be a big benefit if you're in a larger department or, um, you know, in your first year when you maybe won't be matched with a dedicated faculty advisor. I think it's beneficial throughout the program because you have somebody who's known you for four years, but it's really in those crucial, that crucial first semester and crucial first year when it can make a big difference. Great. Thank you, Jackson. Uh, a couple of different questions kind of coming in around uh, career resources uh, and how, <clears throat> excuse me, how being in Kilshand may help you with internships and life beyond your undergraduate degree. Um, so just thinking about the different ways that that we support your growth, um, both both in connecting you with or providing career services uh, and and finding internships uh, and and exploring postgraduate. Well, I can't tell you about postgraduate life yet. I will get back to you in about a year. Um, but uh, what I've done is I also had my meeting with Taryn this past week and she just broaches the question very kindly. Like, what are you thinking about? And again, I don't know. I'm getting the sense that I'm not very good at deciding what I want ahead of time. And so what I've done is I've made a spreadsheet and I showed her my spreadsheet and it's got a different combination of master's programs and law school programs. And she just talked through it with me and we discussed all the different avenues that um, the Kilichin coursework that I've taken, the major coursework that I've taken, how that's going to set me up for success later on. And I talked to her about my Keystone project ideas and how that's going to prepare me to do something beneficial um, in my post-grad life. So if you email me back in a year, I will definitely tell you how that's turned out. Um, also as Kilochan students, just to add on, we do have access to BU's larger network of that support. There's the Center for Career Development, which is wonderful. They host fairs all the time. Um, there's workshops all the time. Um, for really kind of whatever you're interested in. So um, there's, there's many ways that you can uh, get support around things like that. And for internships um, over the summer as well, plenty of opportunities. Um, there's also lots of different grants that you can apply for, particularly if your internship is unpaid. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different, a lot of different um, routes you can take at BU. Yeah, I'll jump in and kind of echo some of that. I think one of the unique things is some of the projects that you're challenged to do um, is, is working with a group of students who have different academic backgrounds. And you're thinking about, for example, the issue of forced displacement, um, and you're bringing your, your passion, your skills, uh, but also kind of getting challenged to think about, well, what, what someone from the School of Business might think and how they might approach that problem. Well, someone from the School of Fine Arts is going to bring their talents in. Um, so you're really getting an opportunity to work with a team of students who are going to help you think about the world a little bit differently. And that's going to prepare you for internships and summer jobs in different ways. Um, and I know I've had a number of different conversations with students over the years, some of which just providing another sounding board uh, for a cover letter or, or doing a mock interview. Um, there's lots of different ways kind of the community is here to support you in the ways that you want to seek those supports out, right? And so just thinking about what does that look like for you and what are you looking for in, in that support? Um, I guess uh, thinking about all the different things that you've done and you are all doing, uh, how do you find balance in your everyday life? I can definitely start speaking to this. 
Um, as Kilshan students and Honors College students, obviously we have very large academic commitments, but that is only the start of what defines us as college students because mental health is extremely important and college is here not only as a place to learn, but here as a life experience. So definitely trying to find time for yourself is extremely important. One of my favorite parts about BU and Kilishan specifically is its location. Um, by being smack dab in the middle of the city, specifically Kilishan Hall is one block away from this awesome park complex called the, called the Esplanade, which is basically just like this whole highway for um, pedestrians along that goes all along the city of Boston. And it's really awesome because you, there's a ton of BU students like either throwing a Frisbee or having a picnic or doing all sorts of things that tr kind of escape the BU bubble and just have a mental reset. I was out there earlier today. I walked all the way up to Longfellow Bridge and I have a pair of rollerblades too that I use a lot on campus. And But definitely just trying to find avenues to de-stress and doing whatever you can and whatever you do to enjoy your time here in college is also extremely important as a college student. Yeah, the Esplanade is one of my favorite places to walk at lunch, just right along the water. Um, you can find a quiet moment if you want, or you can kind of be in the, in the hubbub of students and, and, and folks riding bikes, walking. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty phenomenal spot. Other folks' experiences and thoughts on how you all <laughs> stay balanced. I can talk a little bit about this too. Um, I know there was another question in the uh, Q&A a little bit ago about being pre-med. Um, being a human physiology major, being on the pre-med track, it's definitely demanding. Um, you know, it's currently, I'm also overloading with 20 credits. Um, I just, I saw some classes that I thought were interesting and, you know, with this semester with a lot of classes being on Zoom, I decided to go for it. So, you know, finding balance has been something that has really been important to me. You know, it, it's definitely important in all your semesters, but it's something that's really resonated with me, uh, over the last couple of weeks and months. So I think my biggest tip would be remember to take time for yourself. Um, you know, it sounds so cliche, and I know you've probably heard it from every high school guidance counselor out there, you know, finishing the college process, but it's really, really important that you set aside a chunk of time out of your day. It can be so easy to go, you know, in normal, you know, normal semesters from class to class now from Zoom call to Zoom call, which I honestly find to be a little bit more draining. Um, but, you know, it's, it can be really easy to get sort of wrapped up in that whirlwind of academics. And it's really helpful to set aside, you know, even if it's just a half an hour, an hour of your day, where you're just going to do something completely unrelated to academics, whether that's, you know, sitting in your bed and reading a book, or catching up on a Netflix show, um, you know, going out to grab lunch, grab dinner with some friends, um, just really emphasizing the importance that, you know, your, your coursework is always going to be there. And it's, you know, of the utmost importance that you're, you know, you're keeping up with your homework, you're doing your studying. But at the same point, you know, for me, it's been really helpful, you know, using Google Calendar to go in and block off chunks of time. Um, I sort of struggled with this a little bit in my freshman year. So I went in and uh, honestly, you would probably laugh if you looked at it now, but I scheduled what time I was going to wake up, what time I was going to have lunch, what time I was going to relax in between my classes to really hold myself accountable. And it was definitely a little bit draconian and drastic, but it worked and it helped set me on a path where that became part of my daily routine. So now, you know, I, I look forward to my lunch after my four back-to-back -back lectures on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I save that hour where I have my lunch at my desk and uh, I've been trying to get through my every Simpsons episode ever marathon. So that is my, one of my saving graces on my Tuesdays and Thursdays. putting it all together, Aiden, truly putting it all together. And, and it takes a process, right? I think one of the things that I think Aiden and, and, and I think everyone's hit on so far, right, is it takes a lot of processing to understand these systems. And we're here to really help guide students to really make sure that not only they make the right choices, but, but that they see that the bevy of choices that are available to you, right? It's not just going from class to class. It's about sometimes rollerblading the class and really feeling like feeling like your best self. No, I, I see Aiden, I see ya. And so we just actually got a question earlier about this moment in time right now. So we're actually in the midst of registration season. We're about 10 days away from our juniors and seniors, seniors registering. And then we're about, what is it, 17 days away from our first year students registering. So related to that, I kind of want to get a read on sort of like 
you know, not only is it kind of talk a little bit about, can someone talk maybe more about kind of what intro class sizes look like? And then when you're on that second registration, when you're on that freshman, you know, you're in the midst of your first semester, you realize you have priority registration, that you can overload to 20 credits. How do all those play into how you build your schedule and how you've built your schedule since that first year where you realized that these opportunities were available to you? Okay, I guess I'll go and then Morgan, you wanna go after? <laughs> okay, um, so uh, I guess, okay, yeah, so registration. Um, I know that was particularly overwhelming um, freshman year, given that you know not, well, you know some things, but you don't really know about what's going on um, when, what you're, when you're heading into freshman year. So I understand that that's overwhelming to get used to a new system, no idea what classes you're gonna take. Um, I was undecided freshman year as well, so I really didn't know what was going on. Um, so I understand that concern. Um, I want to say that um, the advisors were absolutely wonderful. Taryn was great. They got me all set up. Um, and honestly, Kilchan makes registration a little bit more straightforward, in my opinion, just um, given that there are some classes that we have to take that we're required to take each semester. Um, so for example, freshman year, you're going to take a writing studio and a seminar um, in interdisciplinary seminar of your choice. And so already you have two of your classes filled up um, that you largely, um, particularly with the seminars, you get to choose kind of what that's about. There's so many choices and all those things will fill um, hub requirements as well. So right off the bat, you're doing really great. Um, and then you only have a few more spots to fill. Um, I was undeclared. I just chose classes based on my interests and that helped me um, figure out the major that um, I, I decided to ultimately go with. Um, however, uh, freshman year as well, it's really not as terrible as maybe you might think just because you have to take intro classes. So for like whatever you're interested, really, like there's generally going to be some kind of like basic intro class that you need to take. So at the end of the day, um, your schedule actually like will fall together really nicely um, freshman year with what you're trying to do. So please don't um, stress too much about that. I know it's it's overwhelming. And then as you go along, um, you like figure out what your interests are. Um, I know maybe that doesn't seem, I, I feel, I thought I was gonna be confused forever, but like you you really will like grow and like learn about what you'd like to do um, each semester. So um, you can kind of let that guide you a little bit more, take some more electives um, in there and your advisors help you along the way. And I'm, I'm telling you after one semester here, you really have everything like figured out regarding the advising system and everything. Like you'll, you'll be much more on the ball. Um, with it, so. And I would just add, Marie covered most of it, but I would just add that the planner is your friend. Um, I, it's almost like a game for me. Like I like organizing and making it look pretty, um, but the planner, you can go into your student link and it's open for you guys now. Um, and you can go in and you can just see when different classes would be for you. Uh, is that class going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Is that something that you would like to do? Um, is it going to be a longer lecture? Is it going to be a seminar? Is it going to be a studio? When would you like your classes to fall? Um, and then also in regards to like making balance, you guys also have two PDP credits. And so if you want, you know, a place to de-stress, FitRec is there for you. I have done yoga uh, at least two semesters, maybe three. Um, and I would just go down there on Friday mornings and I do it on Zoom now from my home. And I put that into my planner first, actually. So your planner is your friend and it is definitely there for you. Planner is your friend. Very true. Absolutely. And, and, and Jackson, I actually wanted to kind of swing it to you with econ. I wanted to maybe have you talk about the intro econ course size and kind of how that changes as you go through the curriculum as well, considering your experience. So I'd love if you could chime in on that. Um, yes. Yeah, so as you might expect, um, intro courses are, are quite large, um, often, you know, large sort of lecture style seating um, upward of 100 people, um, at least in the econ department, but it really drops off quite rapidly. So um, intro econ, 100 level, upwards of 100. Um, 200 level econ, maybe closer to 40. Beyond that, much smaller. 
um, you know, and that includes like seminar style classes that are very discussion based as well as smaller lecture style classes. So I think um, there's a lot of variance in course size. Um, I will note that your Kilicha and first year courses are going to be very small um, and that holds regardless of what field of study you're in. Thank you, Jackson. Yeah, I'll hand it off. Danny, do you have a, a next one? Yeah, we've actually kind of two final questions that I'd love to pose to pretty much everybody here. And, and um, the first part of that question is um, the most common way you've seen students get around campus, right? So question one, most common way, or, or maybe maybe we can even add, what's the most interesting way you've seen someone get around campus? Um, and then advice you would give yourself going into your first year uh, at Kilashant. So most interesting way you've seen someone get around campus um, and maybe common ways too. And then uh, advice you might give yourself. Um, and we'll start um, with the duo, Aiden and Charlie, and then we'll go Morgan Marie and finish with Jackson. Yeah, definitely. I can speak a little bit as far as getting around campus goes. Um, as I said before, I have a pair of rollerblades. So I'm the lunatic roll rollerblading up and down Com Ave five minutes before class starts to make sure that you're not late to lecture. Um, I'll claim that is the most interesting way to get to class. I definitely don't see a lot more people walking into a lecture hall with rollerblades in their hands. Um, as far as that, a lot of other students choose to either walk to class because Kilishan is located in East Campus, which is closer to most academic buildings. And if you do need to travel a little bit further, BU has a shuttle program, which runs very regularly. And there is a bus stop for the shuttle within one block of Kilishan, which you can use strictly for BU. And another perk of living in the city is you can always use public transportation in one of like the seven T stops that are on BU's campus. So there's definitely plenty of options when it comes to transportation as far as getting to class and getting around campus. Um, in terms of the transportation, definitely the bus is your best friend. Uh, if you have to get somewhere really quickly, it can sometimes be a little bit frustrating because you are relying on a schedule. But um, my freshman year, I had a seminar up in the College of General Studies, and it was at nine something in the morning. Um, in high school, I was up every day at 530. So I really relished, you know, being able to sleep in a lot freshman year. And as a part of that, I would tend to wake up too close to my seminar time where it would not have been possible for me to do that 20, 25 minute walk from Killishon. It absolutely would be if you can, you know, not roll over past your alarm, but I just wasn't really feeling it on a lot of days. So for me, being able to utilize the bus uh, to get up there was absolutely essential. And I can proudly say I was never late to any of my classes in the College of General Studies, even though it was, it seems like ridiculously far away from Killishon. All of the bike lanes around um, Boston and BU's campus are very wide as well. So a lot of students choose to bike or skateboard within the bike lanes and Kilishan Hall has its own bike storage room as well, which a lot of students utilize. In our greatest hits with uh, how we get about campus um, and then advice you would give yourself. As far as advice I would give myself is I would say it sounds very, um, very redundant again and very cliche but just go for anything college is such a new experience for so many things that why not try a lot of things that pique your interest that you may not have had the opportunity for before bu has like five thousand different clubs and i encourage you within that first week to attend at least one or two meetings of every single club well not every single club obviously but any club that uh, really sparks your interest then that'll really get allow you to get a feel for any sort of activity or events that you didn't have an opportunity for beforehand, but you can really find a passion for later in life. And then I guess my biggest piece of advice, um, again, not to, not to keep piling on the cliche boat, but I think it's true, just relax. You know, going through the college application process, it's a haul, it is so much work, filling out all those essays, talking about yourself. I am a very type A person, I like to know what's going on coming into college, this idea of, you know, not, I knew that I wanted to be pre-med, but I didn't have everything lined up. I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I, I kind of felt like I was stumbling around in the dark for a little bit. And I think the greatest lesson that Kilishan in BU has taught me is that that's okay. You don't have to have everything figured out. You don't have to have your plan figured out. You know, you don't need to know where you're going to intern or what kind of volunteer opportunities you're going to take up. 
live life in the moment, you know, things are going to come at you, be able to, to step back and, and recognize that it's okay to not know what's going on. I think that's something that has really helped guide me through something that, you know, when I feel myself sort of spiraling, oh, I don't have, I don't have summer research lined up. I don't have an internship. It's okay to not know what's going on. You know, our advising team, as we've stressed throughout this meeting is fantastic. They will absolutely help ground you. If you're having one of those moments where you're like, I just, I have no idea, send your advisor an email. And more often than not, you know, they'll be able to schedule a meeting with you really soon to sort of talk you back down to reality and to, to help you make sure that, you know, you're, you're on the right track. You might not know you're on the right track, but you're on the right track. I love that. You might not know, but you are. And that's, that's often a, a, a sequence of our life is figuring out, you know, where are we and where are we going? We'll, we'll, we'll know when we get there. Um, Morgan and then Marie, any advice you would give yourself as a first year student? Let's see. Well, first I have to tell you guys the most interesting person I saw going across campus was a man in a Pikachu onesie going on an electric scooter down Bay State Road. And I don't think that that guy should ever be blamed for anything. Um, and then I'm personally team walk. I have made that walk to CGS. I have done it in heels. Maybe take the bus if you're wearing heels. Um, but then advice that I would give myself would be talk to people, whether that's your roommate, that's the person who lives across the hall. It's definitely your professors. I have only recently started going to office hours for my professors and my TFs, but they want to talk to you. They're there to help you. Um, a lot of people don't go to office hours. So if you go, you're probably gonna make a friend. Like they will want to keep you there to keep talking to you. Um, and you know, there is a support system out there. You just have to make that first. Uh, re uh, you have to reach out to build that relationship. All right, so I guess I'll go next. Um, I was going to say someone on an electric scooter on Calm Ave, but that really does not top what Morgan just said. So I think you win on that one. Um, wish I could have seen that. Uh, regarding advice for your freshman year, um, mine's a little bit similar to what Charlie was talking about, but I think that um, I would want to tell myself to just take it day by day. Um, it, I, it's so easy to get caught up in the thinking, well, if I don't take this class, then I'm not going to be able to get this major. And then if I don't get this major, I'm not going to get into that like graduate program. And if I don't get into that graduate program, I won't be happy. Like it's so easy to just start spiraling. Um, and that's just, that's not true. Um, you're going to have to take it by day, day, day by day. Um, a lot of times you're not going to know what's going on. Um, and it's, it's a, it's a hard feeling to learn to get comfortable with. Um, I think that was kind of my biggest challenge freshman year, but, uh, like there's so much support here, whether it be, as we've mentioned, um, this advising, it's absolutely incredible. Um, the whole Kill Chan community, um, uh, your friends, BU as a whole, your professors, um, even though this feeling is really uncomfortable sometimes to be able to, to just to keep growing and to keep learning new things and to, to um, learn more about yourself. Like that's, that's a lot of growing and that takes a lot of energy, um, but you're, you're gonna have so many people around you it, like more than willing and able to help you with that. Um, so just, just take it day by day, things will work out. Um, th things will work out. They do. And Jackson, any advice you would give yourself as a first year student? Um, to second Morgan, office hours, I think are, you know, one of the most valuable resources out there um, to maybe put a slightly different spin on it. It matters a lot for, you know, understanding course content and feeling more confident, but I think it's also really where I've gotten to like formulate my own intellectual agenda. And I became certain in my major, I was never undeclared, but I was very uncertain for my first two years. And I think it's close connections with professors that really um, helped me there. So office hours are amazing, even if you don't think you need them academically, and maybe you don't. Um, also, Boston is a great public transit city. Don't hesitate to use that to explore the city. Maybe pick up a semester pass. Great. Yeah, lots of ways to explore the city, get to know the community you're part of. Um, and, and office hours are just another way to build relationships with folks. Um, so thank you all and thank everybody for coming. We want to get you out but within an hour, um, you know, in the Zoom, Zoom world, but uh, want to be just, just another huge shout out and thank you to our fabulous students for being here, taking time out of their busy days in the middle of the spring, 
midterm final push of April. Thank you for taking that time. Really, really appreciate it. Um, and for those of you who are still with us, we're really excited to have you. Um, I want to let you know there are a couple more events that you can attend um, on your BU portal. You can register for these events. Uh, coming up on Wednesday, April 14th is a presentation on Kilshawn's Live and Learn community with Eric and a couple of our in-house residents, uh, RAs, resident assistants, as well as faculty and residents. So there's some really cool people um, that you can ask some questions on. Uh, and following that presentation on Saturday the 17th. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Keystone Project, that seminal final event that students work towards, as well as all the different experiential learning opportunities that you have as a Kilshawn student, um, and so, uh, both at BU and specifically um, within our own community. And finally, we have a Kilshawn student panel on Thursday, April 22nd. So please, if those sound interesting and excited to come talk to more students and, and to us, um, visit your BU portal uh, to register for that. Otherwise, have a lovely night. Happy Thursday. Enjoy your weekends. And uh, thank you all for coming out. Bye. This is the quiet goodbyes it's now. Gonna, it's going to cut off and it's just going to disappear. It's going to disappear. So I want to yeah. say thank you to everybody too. Thank you, everyone. Good night.